Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my classroom. It is the end of the year, so it looks a little different than it did at the beginning of the year, but before I pack everything up for summer, I thought it would be fun just to show you all the different areas of my classroom, things that I have loved this year, things that I'm going to change next year. If you are new here, my name is Molly Malloy. I teach fifth grade in Southern California. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Lessons with Laughter. All right, let's begin the tour. All right, so this is what my classroom looks like when you walk in the front door. The desk layout is different. We usually have our desks arranged in groups. However, we literally switched seats, I think a week before we were told we wouldn't be returning to school this year. And I gave my students a lot of input on how they wanted them arranged. And this is what they came up with. So I don't know if it's hard to see. It's like a little U and then a bigger U. And then there's also some other random desks that we had to squeeze in somewhere. So that's how our desks are arranged. And then over here is our classroom library. If you have not watched my other video, all on classroom library organization, that might be helpful if you are looking to set up and organize a classroom library. I talk all about how I organize my books, my books find labels, um, all the information about that. Above my classroom library, we have, these are our student book recommendations. I will link everything that I talked about in the video down below. So these are available at my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Basically, um, what students do is just when they have a book they want to recommend to class to classmates, they come over and they fill out one of these um, book recommendation cards. They can choose whichever one they want. The rectangles, the blank rectangles, are for drawing the book cover. And then they hang them right up here so that as students are browsing for books, they have some good recommendations that they can use. And then over here above our classroom library, this is my classroom map. I get asked about this all the time. I actually painted it myself. It's on a canvas, you can see that. And I just projected a map of the United States onto the canvas, traced it with pencil, painted it, and then outlined with white paint pen. And I did this a few years ago and it's still holding up super well. This back wall is actually all, um, windows into our side room. So I covered it up with these curtains from Amazon and I love how that looks. We also, I added the fake tree this year and I'm just like obsessed with it. I just love what it brings to our classroom. This is our affirmation station and it is one of my favorite changes that I made to our classroom this year. I just love how it turned out so much. I, this, um, the paper is removable wallpaper, I think. It's from Amazon. I will link that below. And then the quotes are just from um, different sellers on TPT or Etsy. My others are from Jess Gold. She is amazing and designs the cutest stuff. Next year, I think I need to reprint these because some of them got a little like bent at the edges. I don't want to laminate them because I don't want there to be a glare, but I love how it turned out. And then over here, this was what we used for our class meeting. Those came from, I designed them after seeing Bethany from Teaching and So Forth, how she had her posters. And then I just created these little envelopes so that students, they would write down their concerns or suggestions or shout outs on an index card and then put it in those pockets. And then down here, it's just kind of like my front station it has my phone and then my teacher's manuals or binders are just things that I needed to easily access. And then this is the main area where my dock cam and everything is housed at the front of the classroom. These drawers down here are so awesome. I got these from Michael's and they are amazing. I still have to make labels for the rest of them, but I got this. I don't know, halfway through the year, I used to have this like small little black tech cart and it was just too small. And I love this. There's so much space on here. The white table is actually from Ikea. Okay. So moving back over to this area of the classroom, this is our math board. 
Um, over here, this is from Jill, and we would just use it for different like challenge problems and stuff in math. Up above it, these multiples posters are from my friend Kristen at Ladybug Teacher Files. And then up here, these are our Accountable Talk posters. And I have these available in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. I'll link them down before. I'll link them down below. My students use them all the time, especially at the beginning of the year when we're practicing Accountable Talk. Eventually, they get so used to using these that they don't even have to refer up here, but it's a really nice place to reference, especially at the beginning of the year. Over here is our writing wall. It, this has actually been different things over the year, um, but right now it's writing. I had just taken down a bunch of stuff and was working on redoing it. Um, so that's why it looks kind of disjointed. Um, but yeah, this is our writing wall. And so next year I'm going to add a heading, cut out letters for, um, let's say writing with my Cricut. I'm going to do the same for the math wall this year, kind of like I have for the reading wall. And it's going to look a lot better. So <laughs> goals for next year. All right, down here, I love this um, idea. I do this at the beginning of every year uh, when we talk about growth mindset. It's usually the first week of school. I have my students design posters, encouraging their classmates to have a growth mindset, to not give up. And then every week, my teacher's assistants switch them out. And so I just love the student artwork and encouraging words over here. It just, I just love it. And they love seeing their posters in our classroom. Over here is another kind of student station area. Those are our Bulldog Best cards that we use. It's an all school reward. And then if you have not seen one of these before, this is amazing. I will link it below. Uh, we call it our Turner Inner. Obviously that's not the te technical name for it, but my students use it to turn in their paperwork especially at the beginning of the year, if they have something that they're turning in and I want it in number order, um, then what they do is each of them has a class number. So they'll come, let's say their number is 15, they'll come to number 15, lift it up and then put their work behind it. And I, it only goes to 31. I typically have more than 31 students. So um, numbers like 32, 33, they would all just put their work behind that back spot. But then what you do is you slide it all out together when they're all turned in and they're already in number order, which is incredible. So love that. This is a, another place that they will turn in work. If I don't need it in number order, they'll just turn it in, in this basket. And then down below here, this is just different forms and stuff that my students might need. This is a behavior reflection um, that I use with to help communicate with parents that students will reflect on their behavior if they made a choice that was not the best choice. Um, test correction pages peer feedback. So all kinds of good stuff. And then I always put extras down here for just different things that we're working on. I always try to print off extra copies and then we store those there as well. So that's our counter over here. We just have, this is where we keep um, down here, our um, PE equipment. Lunch, our lunch tub is down under here. So students store their lunch box in there. And yeah, that's that. Over here are our student mailboxes. I actually got this mailbox thing my first year teaching. It had belonged to another teacher. It has been well loved, but it is lasted and held up so well. So when I got it, there were like tons of different um, name tags that were on here. So I took them all off. I covered it in black Sharpie and then I created these binder clip numbers. Um, I have these available also on my TPT store. I'll link down below, but I just printed them and mod podge them on. So every student has a number and a mailbox up above this little um, container. There is where my students put money if they have to pay for anything. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I also keep a class list over here for my students who are mailing things out so they know whose mailbox is whose. And then these folders are for when students are absent. I have a student who is an absentee aide, so they'll put that on their desk and put all the papers and stuff that they 
missed from the day. <laughs> Coming over here, so this is our front door and this is our check in and check out system. It helps me know, it helps me take attendance and then it helps me know where my students are throughout the day. This comes from my friend Kristen at Ladybug's Teacher Files and I just blew the numbers up. I just printed them a little bit bigger so that they fit um, two different boards. So um, I covered up one of the names, but I wanted to show you the example. So I print all my students' names off. I put these three magnets on the back and they all coordinate with their color. And then when students get here in the morning, they just move their name and put it over on classroom. They have to go somewhere throughout the day, like to the office or the bathroom. They'll just stick their tag down there. It's just a good, easy way for me to keep track of where they are in case I forget. This is our one classroom window. That's our gorgeous field out there. But yeah, it's a lot different. My old classroom had tons of windows and this is our only window in this classroom. But I have this curtain. I just hung it on a tension rod and it just kind of makes it a little bit more homey over there. Um, down here, this table actually was in our classroom library for most of the year, but now it's over here and it holds, these are my students' keyboards and then all of our clipboards. So it's another kind of student center station. And then turning around here, this is our supply cart for the year. I don't know what this is going to look like next year, um, but we have like dull pencils. There's a spot for sharp. Look at how cute that is. I got that from the Target dollar spot. Um, pencils, scissors, markers, crayons, glue sticks, Kleenex, band-aids, all that we kept in the supply cart this year. All right, over on this wall. So this, my school is a PBIS school. So that is our acronym. And then those clothespins are for hanging different things. If we have like announcement flyers that go home or if we're working on a big project, I'll hang up the flyers and information there. Next up is our writing wall. I talked about that a little bit in my last video, but it's been such a game changer this year. So everyone has a paper and then these little fasteners are how we put their writing on. They just open up and then we can slip their writing on and then close back down. And I just collect their writing there for the whole year. The two hole punch that I use for the black papers and for their writing. So I use it all the time throughout the year. I will link that below as well as those fasteners in case you want to do something similar for your writing wall. And then coming over here, this is our class picture wall, our fifth grade family wall. So I print these pictures out throughout the year. My students write captions on the pictures that describe what they're doing in the picture. And then we hang them up there. Usually at the end of the year, I take them all down and then my students tape them or glue them in their memory books. Obviously, we won't be doing that this year, though. Um, this is my small group table. There's, we use these black stools from Ikea. My students just unstack them, put them around the table when we need to use them, and then stack them back up when they are done. It is a whiteboard table, which is so awesome. We use it all the time in math. My students love being able to write on it. And then up here, this purple <laughs> bulletin board. I didn't really know what to do with it this year. And so it had those multiples posters on it that my students refer to during our math small groups. However, I also have those multiple posters over there. I put them up there halfway through the year. And so I think next year I'm going to take those down and just make this like an inspirational quote kind of all. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> And then back here is my teacher area. So I have this teacher toolkit, which I'm obsessed with. I'm actually gonna print new labels for it this summer. These are ones that I made with old scrapbook paper. And then I printed out the, um, the different items, backed it on black paper, and then <laughs> glued it to the scrapbook paper. So I'm gonna print off, I did this years ago, I'm gonna print off a new design for next year. And then down below, I keep all my teacher's manuals and things like that there. Over there is my candy stash. And oh my gosh, I have to show you my classroom toolkit because it is amazing. All right, here's my classroom toolkit. My parents got it for me. Of course, it's pink. And it has everything you could possibly need when you are setting up your classroom or just 
repairing things throughout the year. I love it. I also have a spot for all my colorful pins. I took them all home. So that's why that looks super empty right now. And then up here is where I keep my calendar and then any like recess duty schedules or um, pull out schedules, things like that. I keep up here. And then on that side wall over there, I keep student letters and drawings and things that my students gave me throughout the year. And then over here is our class calendar. This also came from my friend Kristen at Ladybug's Teacher Files. I did not used to have a big class calendar and I'm so glad that I do now. My students refer to it all the time. We put um, all the events, student birthdays, assemblies, important due dates, all that stuff up here. And so they love it. She also has these fun stickers or not stickers, but these fun little things that we can put on too throughout the week. And then these magnets are amazing. So we have, this is where we keep them in one of these little photo boxes. And then one of my students is in charge of changing out the date every day and they're magnetic. So they just stick right up there, which I love. I will link those down below too. This is our um, students. If they owe classroom money, they'll write their name up here in Expo marker just makes it easier to keep track of. This is where we put different, our read aloud books after I've read them, we leave them here so students can read them for a little bit. This is a magnetic shelf. Um, it's for spices. Ashley recommended it from Amazon. And then I love these magnets too. Um, when my students turn in class passes, which I will talk about when we get over there, they, when they're using their class passes, they put them up here with a magnet. So same thing, all, every, all this stuff I will link, um, down below. These are from my friend Jill, Hello Fifth, for her language wall. And so we would use this part of the whiteboard for that. Over here, I have um, our must do, may do list. So we would just write that out in Expo Marker for the day. This is for our math groups. And that, once again, is from my friend Kristen. And then our house points. I set them up this way after Jess had a picture of them like this in her classroom and I love it. We have class houses. We got this idea from the Ron Clark Academy. So our classes are Amazad, Unruckus, Hashima, and Odvaha. And each student is sorted into a house at the beginning of the year and then they can earn house points for that. And then over here, this is our daily schedule. These are on magnets. So I can change them throughout the day. Class jobs. These are available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. And then the clear um, square pouches I got from the Target dollar spot. And then each job has the description on it so students know what's expected. And then I write students' names. I cut index cards so they're a little bit shorter and then write students' names on them. And then once we switch jobs, each job or each student's name is in a job card so I just put their name up here and then that's how we easily know which student has each job and then we also pay them here too so my bankers on Fridays would pay students for their classroom job with our class money and they just slip it right in here in the pocket all right and then this might be for a whole another video but um, when I talked about students using class money and passes these are some of the different passes that we have available um, in our classroom that students can use with the money that they earn. Uh, I guess I didn't mention, well, I did. They earn money for their class jobs and then for house points. They also earn class money for that. And then they can buy these different passes. And then over here, this bulletin board, I am so excited about because I just had added this year. Usually um, I have a black cart that goes down there, but I took that home with me. Um, but this is where we put like our class meeting leaders, Cleanup game leaders, just a student information board. Vocabulary cards for the week usually go up there. That's the spinner that I use to sort students into houses at the beginning of the year. And here's the front of our classroom. The place value chart is from Bethany at Teaching and so forth. 
And then here is our class stage. Those two bins are usually on the rolling cart. Um, okay, but our class stage, I, a parent built it for me a couple of years ago. I measured everything out. I do not remember the measurements, um, but I love it. It was so great. And a couple of years ago, I had another parent add these lids to it so I can actually open them up and then down below I can store things. And so there's just all my like old book baskets, so many baskets, just things that are in storage. And then I also had to show you this bench that I got. This is a new addition this year and it is from Amazon. It's a bench that turns into a table that students can write on. My students loved this so much this year. It's kind of awkward in this desk arrangement. I don't know that I would do this desk arrangement again, but they loved it. So there you go. That's what my classroom looks like right before I start packing it up for summer. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you next time.